understand. I can understand if we're, if we're going to sort of use this podcast to talk openly, I can totally understand why a lot of Kenyans have resentment towards sort of the Indians here. And a lot of it is because Hopefully people will get to know they don't identify a particular place with the colour of somebody's skin. Welcome to the Global Indian Podcast, the world's greatest journey and the official platform for people of Indian origin. Because let's face it, we are everywhere. Welcome back to The Voyage. This is Season 1, Episode 4, Made in Kenya. My name is Rajan Nazran and I explore for over a decade I've traveled the world piecing together the kaleidoscope that is our community. I've been held hostage, faced Ebola, and met extraordinary individuals, often in destinations that would surprise you. In this season, I'm joined by my dear friend, screenwriter, actor, and social heart, Kulvinda Gear, and together we'll be taking you on a voyage for the ears as we plunge into the human experience of being a person of Indian origin and taking a closer look at the countries we now call home. This episode is an ode to the power of identity and music. We'll be heading to Kenya to meet the global Indian who represented her entire continent as a performer at the 2010 FIFA World Cup. Her Africanized music has been featured around the globe and she's a proud fifth generation Kenyan. But despite these facts, we invite you to discover the real challenges she still faces when it comes to the notion of identity and how she looks to tackle them and importantly what's it like to be her. Welcome to a very open and honest conversation with a remarkable individual, Alicia Papat. You can find out more about the Global Indian series at the end of this podcast as well as listen to the music by this incredible soul. And just move. Our pu- the puppet family was actually part of uh, General Motors when they first came. And my, and my grandfather, actually a very, very eccentric, very eccentric man, uh, was, I mean, I'm not sure exactly what part, but he was part owner of the race courses. So he, oh, was, wow. uh, he, was, the, he was one of the only men of color who was, um, who was basically yeah sort of part owner and you know part of sort of the society of the race courses very very eccentric man always used to wear a top hat and a cane and he was just uh, into his into his horses and into his sports betting <laughs> 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 yeah i never got to meet my grandfather um and my dad says that that's his biggest regret because uh yeah he was a he was an absolute character well, yeah. well. welcome to the podcast <laughs> thank you <laughs> good okay i suppose what what's the biggest interest that I thought was your fifth generation in Kenya mm-hmm. producing African music? And what you mentioned before on the phone was that you're almost in limbo because some people would almost put you in a box saying, well, you're Indian, you should be doing Bollywood music and others. Right. Like, well, how do you, what's it like to be yeah. you? So, so what it's like, it's like, I'm not, I'm not Indian enough and I'm not Kenyan enough. Um, and so I'm sort of stuck in the middle of it. If I was Indian enough, I'd be doing Bollywood, Bollywood music and speaking Hindi and all that kind of stuff, which I don't. So, um, you know, the sort of the Indian, uh, the Indian population here are like, oh, but she's, she's, she's an English singer. She sings English songs, you know, she's, she's not, she's not Indian. She's not Indian enough rather. And the Kenyans are like, well, she looks Indian and she sings indie music, which is not Indian music, but. For Kenyans, Indie means Indian. And so therefore I'm not Kenyan enough. And so, yeah, it's definitely been pretty difficult trying to sort of balance uh, my identity, especially as a musician here, because I'm not really accepted perfectly properly uh, in either of those sort of departments. But um, it's also who, who, quite- Who was your influences then? Pardon? Who influenced you? Uh, to be a musician or just in general? In general, maybe just in general. Um, I mean, 
so I grew up listening to old school music, old school, old school rock and roll. I love music a lot. My mom uh, used to play the guitar when she was uh, younger and when I was younger. Um, I'm not sure where the, where, the, where the music influence came from other than that, but I just, she, we just grew up listening to music all the time. And I just realized from a very young age that that was just everything I wanted to do. And then uh, if I had to name one person who influenced me in such a big way, it would be Brian Adams. Um, okay. Not sure why, just love his music. <laughs> okay. I just love it. I love everything about that man. I heard him first time and he must have gone, ah. Is, was it, was it a, an epiphany or a moment happened in your life when you say, well, this is what I want to do? No, no real moments. I mean, I, I kind of just always sort of, I was a really weird kid, if I have to tell you the truth. I mean, I would like, <laughs> nobody would have to ask me to sing. I would sort of just say, hey guys, I know we're at a party or at a dinner and I'm just gonna stand on a chair and sing for you. Um, I was just very, very awkward and loved to perform. Um, uh, to my parents' dismay in the beginning, and then and then they started really enjoying the fact that I I just like to be one of those uh, center of attention, show stopping, you know, kids. Um, but but it was yeah. but it was a West Western culture. It was the Western completely culture. Okay. completely the Western culture. Completely, okay. there was no. We, we we used to watch a lot of sort of Bollywood movies when we were young with my parents, but you know, nothing really, that, I didn't gravitate towards that at all. So My how, mom much, did, how much, yeah, I said, I'm sorry, I'm gonna, uh, how much was the Western culture influencing your parents then? I'd say quite a lot, actually. They're, they are, um, I, you know, I'd like to say that my parents are just a really, really lovely mix because we are super culturally still very Indian. We have our curries three times a week and um, you know, all other sort of uh, cultural nuances that are, that are Indian and we still hold very dear to ourselves. But um, at the same time, I am engaged to a uh, six foot four Austrian and um, <laughs> I, <laughs> I pursued music all my life. And so there's some other kind of nuances, that, you know, they're just very sort of relaxed and they understand that I grew up in you know a catholic school um uh, in nairobi and then in south africa and then went to la and so i have this multicultural um view on life and m the majority of that was because my parents did as well my dad went to university in manchester my mm. mom spent a lot of time in canada um so yeah so it's interesting you've had these huge commonwealth influences that have kind of shaped you. So what's it like being, what do you define as being Indian in Kenya? Is it just the food? Is it the movies or is it something else? No, it's the, it's, it's the cultural practices. It's the, it's the family. It's the, it's the, it's the, the values and the, the, the sort of the morals that come, come with it. It's the saying hi to all your elders all the time. It's uh, the big Indian gatherings. It's the, uh, yeah, it's, you know, putting your, your your parents first um so many things there's so many things that you know from all the places that i've traveled to and you see different families and you realize wow okay i am super indian <laughs> like <laughs> i am definitely indian um, then at the just, same token you have this obviously pride of kenya what is kenyanness and what what are those type of cultural elements and also for you Kuli, because you left quite a while ago so what stuck with you, and also for you, Alicia, what's still with you now? Well, I wish I could, I, I, I actually have thought about that question after you sort of brought it up yesterday, and it's super difficult to, uh, to answer because a lot of people ask, uh, you know, have asked me in interviews when I say that, you know, my music has never been accepted by Kenyans, and they'll say, so, you know, what makes you Kenyan? What is Kenyan? Um, and it's just basically a deep-seated, patriotism for like the most beautiful country and people who are so innovative and try so hard to to make a, a better life for themselves and you know I also said Kenyanness is is having sort of a very very um, open view of the world there is no there's no rhythm or rhyme to to living in Kenya. It's an absolute chaotic, beautifully chaotic country. Um, and so just understanding the nuances of the country and the people, um, you know, make you Kenyan. And what about for you, Kuli? What's Kenyanness mean to you? Well, I was born there. You know, I, I, I think 
that's the first place I I, I spat <laughs> in that respect or, or shat or whatever you want to name it. Uh, I, I, it's the fondness of 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 a relationship, not only from my point of view, from my parents' point of view, and what they had an idea of of a, of, a, of a Kenya that belonged it was so. And then having 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 that notion of the, their attachments and your your birth attachment to it. All right, I was there for seven years, and uh, and to a certain extent. The language change. We now, in the language we spoke first, was uh, at home was Punjabi. Then the right. second language, because of '63 and independence, they changed the, the from English to Swahili. So how much Swahili I picked up, I picked up. But there was a still. Listen, Kenya was like for me. I used to think that the stars used to make the noise when they used to twinkle. But later on, as I got older, I found out it was the crickets. <laughs> oh, the crickets! That's so funny. So That's when so I was sweet. growing up, so there was the, the romance of the of the place, the, the vastness of the land, and mm. out that uh, like Alicia says, it's it's the beauty of the country that you remember. And, and when you're a kid, mm. when you're playing uh, uh, Gulli Danda or marbles or yeah. or friends or or we used to see they used to have the East African safari there as well. Yeah. And, and there used to be the great driver Jaginda Singh. We used to make the yeah. cars. Yeah. Oh man. So yeah. So there, there's so much of 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 a community that growing up. As much as uh, the community, yes, to a certain sense, was detached from uh, uh, the African community in a way because mm -hmm. the progression of the, the, the community had grown. As for work you know, what they had developed, their ideas. Uh, but there was, uh, that's what I remember of Kenya. I haven't gone back to Kenya. So oh, you I've should been... definitely come back. I mean, uh, it, it seems like all the things that you sort of romanticize about it are, are similar to the things that I rom romanticize about still. So yeah. I feel I mean, like, I, I feel like growing up here uh, as a kid is, is an absolute treat. It is, uh, it is a country that I want to have my, my kids sort of at least in their early ages grow up because, you know, it really is that great, crazy dream, my dream of Africa. And that's what yeah. Kenya gives you. Yeah, it, it gives you that attachment to the, to the places. Uh, whereas, uh, uh, especially when, um, again, you meet constantly families who have come from there because you're in, in, in Britain itself and they have still have to a certain extent certain roots in Kenya and the whole thing with the Dr. Jutla thing was that that was to do to reconnect and I right. always felt that if I were, ever was going to go back to Kenya I wanted to take something back with me right. uh, and, and I thought that was a perfect thing that charity and, and, it's amazing. and, and to do things uh, and that that was still and that is, I mean, I would love to, uh, that, that was still love to do that. I want to do that. Well, you know, what about for you, Lisa, though? Because you also spent 10 years, which is a significant amount of time in South Africa, right? Right. So do you also feel South African? Um, I am incredibly proud of, of my, of my time in South Africa and the way it molded me. And I think South Africans uh, are, for me personally, my opinion, are the most patriotic people of all the land. Um, I've just never met more patriotic people uh, who love their country and want so badly to, to try and fix it. Um, and that, that's been, it was an amazing experience for me being in South Africa. But even in South Africa, I was always classified, this would be an interesting story actually, this is interesting. Yeah. So in South Africa, coming from Kenya and not knowing any sort of racial, racial boundaries, uh, you know, in Kenya, we really just didn't understand all these sort of racial dynamics and then you go to a small town and an all-girls school in South Africa and everyone keeps asking you the first question they ask you is not after your name is are you black white Indian or colored um, and and so getting that question was really was really difficult for us and especially as, the, as, as Indians who are coming from Kenya and because we didn't only associate with being Indian it was very difficult and we'd say well, I'm Kenyan I'm Kenyan, I'm Kenyan. And because we were so different to the Indians in South Africa, um, 
we all, all of us, all of us collective, and I think there must have been about sort of 60 of us Kenyans, um, especially Kenyan Indians who'd come from Nairobi to South Africa, were all called the Kenyans. So it was a whole different sub subgenre of people. And I thought that was really interesting because, you know, it, it was very difficult for us to just say, yes, we're Indian. Um, and yeah, I found, I found that South Africa, South Africa kind of rocked the boat for me there and, you know, made me really think about my identity. What about when you went to L.A.? Because obviously there is a melting pot. People probably thought you were Latino before anything else. So um, many different things. <laughs> so well, many different things. <laughs> what, what were you there? How do you describe yourself then? How, what was people's reactions to that? I was totally Kenyan there. Uh, you, you, if you said Indian, they'd be like, oh, well, that's exotic. You say Kenyan, they're like, oh my God, tell me everything. Um, how did you get here? Did you get here on a, you know, I'm like, uh, someone said, uh, yeah, I was on a boat. <laughs> you know, I, I want to be a musician so badly. So I hopped on a boat and, you know, I, was, I mean, and people would eat that up. It was really quite funny. But um, yeah, also, oh, you're Kenyan, but you're not black. Mm, yep, that's good observation. I am not. Um, yeah. But I am. Yeah. So, but, uh, Rajan, I think, do you know, maybe in the next sort of five, ten years, I don't know, because the world is getting smaller, maybe the people will get to know that people, hopefully people will get to know they don't identify a particular place with the color of somebody's skin. Ideally. Well, that's the hope. That's the yeah. hope. Well, it's funny. I, I studied in Italy. And when I was over there, people said, where are you from? I said, well, I'm from the UK. But you're brown. So from, from the sunny parts of the UK. You know, we're yeah. all tanned. Yeah. And they were like, wow. I said, yeah. And then even when I, because I did some stuff, I was in, I, was, I worked in Ethiopia for a while, then Nigeria, Tanzania, all over different places. And when we see the press conferences, as I mentioned in the other podcast, in Sierra Leone, the guy said, well, you look Indian, but you sound like a white man. And you think, <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, I get it. You know, it's, mm -hmm. but it's, it's, it's identifying it. skin color to a nation. It's such mm. a bizarre thing. And, but you go through that though, Alicia, because you, I remember I read one of your interviews and you said, you have a lot of comments thrown at you, but it's not about your music. It's not about your voice. It's about go back home. Yeah. How do you deal with that? Is that, Whose mentality is that? And is that a subgroup or is it a rising group in certain parts in Africa? I think it's a, it's a subgroup. I think it, I mean, I, I can, I can understand. I can understand if we're, if we're going to sort of use this podcast to talk openly, I can totally understand why a lot of uh, Kenyans have resentment towards, um, towards sort of the Indians here. And a lot of it is because a lot of the Indians sort of have come to a country like Kenya where they realize that they can have house help and, um, and then they don't treat them very well um, or they feel that they are better than or more superior. And so I think in Kenya, we've really experienced that. We don't talk about it a lot, but it, it, there's definitely an underlying uh, sort of resentment towards the Indian community from the, you know, from the, um, the, the local black Kenyans. Um, and it's really sad because I affiliate more with with my with my local Kenyans than anybody else. But um, I think what the issue is is that you know I, I talk about South Africa being a really sort of being really tough sort of racially. Uh, and when I was younger, I didn't see you know sort of any racial boundaries in Kenya. And then when I came back, I'm like, whoa, they are here. Um, it's very very prominent to me now, and it's very very sad because. Um, if I wanted to identify with anything, if I had to be really honest, it would be to be identified as a Kenyan, as a person, but as a Kenyan, because I feel like I, everything that I have learned has been taught to me by this country and the people who, who brought me up apart from my parents were our house help, um, who's like my second mother and my second father, Joyce and David. And I just feel like so much of my identity is Kenyan, yet Kenyans don't think I'm Kenyan. And that's, I think that's very sad. Yeah, I think that's what hits the nail on the head, isn't it? What has to happen in your mind for that to change? Because you're on that cusp. So I totally know what I need to do. Um, and 
and this is quite funny and paradoxical, um, but I, you know, if I, if I sang more in Kiswahili, if I wrote songs in Kiswahili and sang in Kiswahili, I think that that would really make a massive difference. Um, but it's, it's, but again, it's the idea to me saying like, but why, why do I have to do that to be Kenyan? Why can't I just do what I am doing and be Kenyan? Uh, and so it's like, it's been like a little bit of a tug of war for me. And everyone's like, just do it. Just, just start singing Kiswahili. I'm like, and I could, and I should maybe one or two songs, but I just don't feel like I need to prove my Kenyanness. Does that make yeah, sense? Absolutely. Um, I shouldn't have to prove that I'm Indian enough. I shouldn't have to prove that I'm Kenyan enough. Um, but unfortunately, in this, you know, in this life that we live in, that is something that's important. And I've, I've had to sort of like bite the butter and say, okay, cool. I am, I'm going to start writing a few songs in Kiswahili and I'm going to wave my flag uh, sort of even higher and in everyone's face. This is me. But, you know, even if I don't sing it very well or, or, or speak it very well, I'm going to do it anyway. But what's really weird, you sang at the World Cup, was it, in 2010? Uh, yeah. Surely that should mean something, and that was 10 I mean, years ago. Have, have things not changed uh, since then? No, no, <laughs> no. It's been a tough, I can't, I can't tell you, it's a tough, it's, a, it's, a t it's been a tough journey. I would, have, I would have thought that, number one, that would have, you know, really sort of opened those doors uh, for me in my own country. And then second, I would have thought that, you know, my... Um, collaboration with Lindsay Sterling that has over 57 million views um, and basically you know was shot in this country um, would have also done that but uh, unfortunately people just see me as a as a, like an international artist with Kenyan origin not she's a, a Kenyan a Kenyan musician Wow mm. well, it'll happen one day <laughs> <laughs> it'll happen no, definitely. It's um other area of interest that I was because when we had the discussion, you mentioned about this rise of almost black African identity that's coming through. You know, it's it's yeah. breaking through that glass ceiling. You know, for example, if you have certain magazines, you'll never see a non-African. Why is that? Yeah. And where well, has I that been rooted to? I think it's um again, I think it's like the taking back of uh of uh, of Kenyan identity, you know, um, like just for example, the um, a lot of the a lot of artists here in Kenya who are who are sort of friends of mine and they're really really well known and they do really well. You know, the songs that always do the best are about you know melanin and dark is beautiful and you know all of these different sort of undertones and um, which is perfect. I love it. I love that like Kenyans are trying to take Kenya back in some way, but but taking Kenya back from who is the question. Yeah. Who are you taking it back from? Can, can, it, can it not just be a country that is super multicultural and has so many different facets to it? Can we all not, you know, be a part of the Kenyan identity? Um, and I think that's like the questions that I always have in my head. Um, where, where does that come from? Why it's happening? I'm not 100% I'm not sure, but I'm, I'm, I'm on the bandwagon, which is funny. I'm... Um, I'm also like, yes, let's, let's take it back. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, so it's definitely quite a strange feeling for me where I'm, I'm like, you know, I'm not, I'm not in, I'm not in the car. Yeah. Uh, I'm not part of the, part of the, you know, part of the, the people, but I'm, I'm still very proud of it. And I'm not really sure why that is either. You know, it's really weird. My mom, so they came over to, from the Philippine islands to the UK and she goes, she didn't even realize she was Indian when she was in the Philippines. It's only in here, that's when they had to start dressing up, wearing the Indian clothing, you know, the cuisines and so forth. My grandmother grew up really? speaking Spanish and Tagalog, yeah. That's so, so it's, interesting. It's, so that type of variety, those tentacles of Indianness that almost bind us together of where our origins are, are also expressed in so many different ways as well. Like, Kuli, Yeah, wow, that's so interesting. For you, how much of the Kenyanness has influenced your career? First of all, I think the Kenyan has influenced me. <laughs> Never mind yeah. the career. Yeah. <laughs> Which is important. It's, it's you have to form your own identity before you have any nationality anyway. Who you are and what you're about. Absolutely. Uh, I think. Uh, and secondly, I'm re uh, when I look look at. Kenya, I look at it fondly, fondly, pr proudly in one respect, because 
I, I, I still have, you still have a link with the country. Uh, and then when you come over here, then I am British and I'm proud right. to be British. Yeah. And I believe in what, what, what my Britishness is and my, my ideas of that Britishness. And my Britishness, you know, Aisha, you really fall in it. It doesn't matter, you know, yeah. what, when, how. But as a child, when you arrive here, as an adventure, I embrace the culture of here for what it is. I didn't reject it in any sense. But as a mm. child, you're, you're open to it. You nice. listen to it. You listen to, you know, I didn't hardly speak any English or whatever, the, 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 in, in one sense. You were, you, were put, you were put in a place in the middle of a, in a, in a, in a, middle of a city where, in London, at, then the age of, at the age of 10, you're transported again to the north of England, which is a totally different culture, different idea. So you're, you're, you're nomadic. So you're not ending up in one place. Yeah. And, when you're a, and when you have a nomadic life as a, as a performer, you don't stop moving. So I'm constantly moving. Moving anyway. My, you're moving. You're, and not only moving physically, you're moving mentally with it because you're listening. Yeah. Because you're listening, you're all of a sudden going, well, what's this, what's this other dialect? What's this other dialect? They're all different types of languages. And then you're, and yeah. you find, and you find out that actually they're all part of you. Yeah. Yeah. They're not any indifferent. Yeah. So you embrace it in one sense, but then you have, then you embrace as much as your, your Africanness, as much as your Indianness, you know? Mm. Uh, and then you say, well, this is what, this is, I've, we've talked this before, Roger, to say, well, this is what my Britishness is. Yeah, just so we, we but take my, ownership of it. And if and you've I got take, an issue with, yeah. Yeah, and I take ownership. And, I'll, and the next minute is when I meet any, anybody of, and you never meet anybody of, in, in judgment of color or caste yeah. or creed or color. And, and then you start to notice, you, you, you slowly, slowly segment it in a way of their culture and where they are and where they've come from. And do you know what? We all end up coming from Africa. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> because that, because well, that's where we all come Creature from. of mankind. That's yeah, right. well, that's Ethiopia, right? Let's say that. It's yeah. um, well, the cradle well, of it, civilization. The cradle yeah. of civilization, even there, to, even to the South Africa for the sand people. So you can see when the cradles of, of, of humanity is kicking off. So Africa is my home. It's my origins. It's my that's history. That's so wonderful. So, I feel so proud to, to, to hear that, you know, when any, when, when it, uh, very proud. So you coming from Kenya and then going to, uh, and then going to the UK, um, that's obviously just a, a, like a very big sort of change in culture, but um, imagine sort of the people who come from the UK or from Austria or from Germany and they come in, and live in Kenya or they come and live in an African country. You know, it's such a unique and a crazy cultural change it's like a, it's a cultural shock honestly and so for my fiance it was it was very similar um you know austrian uh, it was only sort of lived in europe all his life uh, took a um, an internship here uh, fell in love with the place because that's what you do when you move to kenya i don't know what it is but it just kind of sucks people in um, this podcast is sponsored by visit kenya by the way okay exactly yeah. tourism yeah. <laughs> tourism board um, and it, it really does suck people in, but it's so beautiful when you talk to people who have never, uh, who have sort of have grown up um, in Europe and then, you know, travel to, uh, to an African country like you sort of, you know, yourself. I, I'm sure you'd have so many great sort of things to say about that, but it's such a change of pace. It's such a change of like, uh, of culture. And uh, yeah, it's interesting that like, I, I, I identify with both, which is so, so interesting. I have like that um, sort of the Kenyan way of thinking and then the sort of European continental way of thinking. Um, and it's, you have to be super adaptable to have both. And it's just yeah. really interesting to meet people who have experienced both those sort of aspects of life. See, you know? Amazingly, see, another thing that happened was that we, we spoke Punjabi at home. So we carried a lot of India with us in language and in culture right. and idea. So from my thinking, maybe as a young man, as, a, as, as an African Indian, and now my thinking as a white Indian, as my first yes. thought, my language. Yeah. So, so, Interesting. So, so what tends, tends to happen is you, trans, you, 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 you transform. 
you, you, you invent, you know, so naturally when you're inventing, when, see, because as, as, a, as a performer, as an actor or whatever, this is my facility. This is my, this is my laboratory. This is it. This is it. You see it in front of you. Right. And it's, it's, I don't have to go to a shop. I don't have to go anywhere. It's here. And the, it, it starts here first. So yes. when, so once that acceptance and once that kind of, uh, once you become malleable a little bit as a sponge, you know, you start, you start wanting to learn more about yeah. other cultures right. and other ideas. But that is ingrained for me from Africa, I think. Because already my parents had transgressed into a culture and adapted themselves. And, oh, then, and then having to do it again, with, uh, you, are, you are automatically uh, trained <laughs> yeah, so, 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 so that's an interesting uh, Alicia, you are so polite. Did you just put your hand up there? <laughs> <laughs> yes, 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 Miss Potter, you, you can question. <laughs> no, so I think it's quite interesting on this topic, right? So you having um, such a, you know, a sort of a, a diverse sort of... Um, identity and different cultures, you know, and, and me and, and, and well, all of us, uh, when we have our children, you know, that's going to be interesting because I learned everything culturally uh, through my Indian identity from my parents and from our greater family, not from yeah. India, not from spending any time there. You know, I learned it all from like from home. And so having now, uh, you know, marrying, um, you know, an, an Austrian with a, with a whole different culture, it's going to be really interesting to see what my kids pick up. What, what, what kind yeah. of cultural nuances do my kids pick up? I mean, I'm definitely going to be making curries all the time for sure. And they definitely have to say hello to everybody in the room and, you know, listen to their elders and all of yeah. those things. But what is going to be, what is going to stand out to them? Are they going to feel that they're Indian or are Austrian or Kenyan? My daughter is 18. Uh, she is an atheist, but yesterday I taught her how to cook dal. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> that's so cute. Was it good? So, oh, God. She cooked it because I said, darling, you'll have to cook it. You know? Now, her mother is French. Oh, wow. So, she has a, a whole beautiful mix there. So, this will help, hopefully help us to sort our identity out a little bit. Yeah. Because it definitely helped me in sense knowing that my daughter is first Ava more than anything absolutely exactly. exactly it's more her what she is yeah, yeah. Uh, not there's a matter of about having a particular it's about her beliefs and her ideas right right and and her ideas are imposed from from the land that she breeds and the land mm -hmm. that, she, that she's been brought up in so that helps us to be us then i'll be whatever i want to be and do whatever i like and i can be right. mr U mr international in that way why bloody not <laughs> yeah. Like Alicia, you went to India um, to do recording, right? Yeah. India will hold a total out there and saying, actually, you're, you're an NRI. Either that's a National Reserve of India or non-required Indian. Yeah. What was it like for you being there? Did people see you Indian first or did they see you African first? And how did that impact well, they saw me. They, they saw me Indian until I spoke. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> until I spoke or sort of like lack of sort of, you know, um, replying in Hindi. And then they're like, where are you from? Like, what is your thing? I'm like, oh, I remember a taxi driver. I'm trying to give him like directions. And he's asking me and answering to me in Hindi. And I'm just not answering back. And this guy is getting really frustrated. He's like, what is wrong with this person? And I just felt so awkward there as well. I'm like, I, I feel like. I feel like I am among my people, but completely not in like a, a comfortable space. I feel embarrassed. I feel uncomfortable. Um, yeah, just, it was just a very strange, strange feeling, uh, you know, going to India and experiencing that. I felt like ashamed that I couldn't speak Hindi and that I, I wasn't able to, you know, um, to fit in. Uh, in the way that I thought I, I would. It was just, it, it was quite weird, actually. Was it, was it just language, though, or was there anything else? I mean, I think it's a, a little more than just language. Um, definitely a little more than just language. Obviously, it depends on where in India you are yeah. going, of course, right? So in Mumbai, then it was basically just language, for sure. But in other parts, then you definitely, you definitely see, see yourself as, uh, yeah, sort of growing up in a much more westernized 
westernized dynamic and how that sort of impacts the way people um, see you. And, and do you think there is a, a gender thing going on there as well? In India? Yeah. For Did sure. Yeah. Of course, okay. for sure. I mean, it, it, I mean, it also happens here. Um, it also happens here to, set to, to a greater degree. So, Ellie, you went to India, you're there, you tell people you're African. What was their expectation when you said, well, actually, I'm Kenyan? Did people get it immediately? Do they understand that you got this large diaspora in Kenya? Or did you still find yourself explaining that? Still find myself explaining that for sure. So here's a question for you. Does India mean anything to you? Hmm. Um, does, the, does the country uh, hold anything special to me? No. Do the people and the culture hold anything to me? Very much so. Um, so it's the Indianness rather than the actual country itself. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I have no affiliation with the country. Yeah. None. I think it's pretty, it's beautiful, um, but what's my affiliation? I don't have family there. I don't have friends there. I, I have hardly had enough time to visit it properly and experience it. But the Indianness for sure is super, super, super ingrained and, and you know, in my person. So when, when people like Prime Minister Modi came to Kenya and you had all these crowds of people together, how do you explain that? Because you're so, people are so far removed. You so I think, I think not everyone is so far removed. I think it's sort of dependent as well on, um, I mean, so we're a smiley. We are, um, hmm. we're definitely a very uh, sort of, you know, sect, but I think it's, I think it's just, it, 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 I hate the word sect, <laughs> yeah. but I think different sects um, relate to India differently. I think that there's a very, 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 very big Indian presence here, like massive Indian presence here. Um, but it's also, you know, it's sort of defining on your, also your, your religion as well, whether you're Hindu or Sikh yeah. or uh, Ismaili. Yeah, that's, that's actually very, very interesting, that notion. Yeah. And so when you hear India turning around and saying, actually, you know, we're really proud of our diaspora, you know, all the accomplishments that they've made across the globe. Um, how do you feel about that? Because, you know, ultimately they're kind of pushing you under that, that banner. But, but are they? What do you mean, are they? No, I mean... You're, you're, like, you're an question, international like... artist. You're a singer. And yeah. I suppose most people out there, if they're in India hypothetically, they wanted to say, well, look at the token of our society. Look how well they've done. So like, I wonder though, I wonder if that's the case. I wonder if like, if people in India who sort of look through my YouTube channel, like, oh, look at that Indian girl in Kenya, you know? Yeah. You I kind of, I, I wonder if, that, if that's a, if that's a thing or not. Um, yeah. Would you, you want that to be a thing? What do I? Would you want that to be a thing? Would you want to be almost a voice of saying? Yes, of course, I would love that. Absolutely. I just don't know if it is a thing. I'm, I'm just sort of thinking in my own mind, like I never actually thought about that. I never thought of myself as Indian diaspora. I always thought of myself as Kenyan diaspora. It's interesting. Yeah, yeah, which I think, which is what you are, right? You're, you're yeah. Kenyan first. Yeah, I never thought about that. It's very interesting. See, because you're bilingual as it is, speaking Swahili and speaking English. Right. And, and but you say you don't, you didn't speak Gujarati. Uh, or, uh, see, because for me, the language helped me to create a link with Indian. Right. And very important because I think there was so much, certain things are said in, in a culture, uh, which actually really helped me enhance my creativity as well. Right. So, it, it, you know, uh, having that Indianness and having that connection, even though I'm even two generations or how many generations drawn away from it, it with the language it helped. On, it, sometimes it helped me with the writing as well, a lot. Sometimes I would, oh, put wow. my, sometimes I would even think in Indian. And if, if need be, 
thinking Swahili or thinking right. in English or thinking certain ideas or certain certain ways. Uh, that's another thing I, I, I kind of try, I try not to impose onto my children in a way that they have to learn. I think it's, it's a benefit to them if they learn another language. Oh, absolutely. Not and if you're lucky, and if you're lucky enough to be a, to a closer to a culture that you, a culture you're closer to, it'd be easier for you to learn that language. language. But, but then again, I, I, you know, uh, I, I, certain, certain people say, well, did you speak to them when you were young in, in, in Punjabi? I said, well, I don't write it. My parents didn't make me write it. I can speak it. So already right. it's, di it's already started to dilute. I said, now my next generation is, they actually don't want to know about things like that. They want to know about themselves on, on this yeah. level of it. Right. So, so I, I'm, I say, I can't really impose it on them until they're of a particular age. Until they're they older and they, can, and they can sort of decide for themselves. Yeah, and make a decision. Hopefully they can, as much as learning French or Spanish right. or learning uh, Arabic or maybe or even uh, Swahili even much as learning another language, it really does help you uh, in, in kind of uh, yeah. connecting. It, it gives with, you more, more expression into this life oh, form that we call sure. humanity, right? So mm. sure. we're humans first before anything. We're humans. And what a fantastic episode and a great message to finish on. We are all humans first. Well, hey, if you like that episode, Make sure you like, you subscribe, and you share, especially with other global Indians out there. And if you want to find out more about the series or even suggest destinations, reach out via social media, either on Instagram at the Nazarans or on Twitter, Pod Global Indian. In the meantime, I shall leave you with the wonderful voice of Alicia as she sings her latest song in Swahili. Until next week, I hope all remains fantastically well.